Hello everyone, I'm Harneet, a technical marketing engineer for Cisco. Today I will talk about the new feature, full qualified domain name net added in Cisco Secure Firewall version 7.1. In short, we also call it FQDN net. The FQDN net can change destination addresses using the FQDN response from internal DNS server. FQDN name can be included in the net policy for enhanced usability. It also allows for a simplified firewall insertion in the public and private cloud. Currently, we support it for both IPv4 and IPv6. The main benefit it provides is of having dynamic IPs for destination net and helps with one to many DNS resolution using a load balancer. A simple example for the use case is a web server located inside my network that keeps changing IP every week. I will perform a small demo on how to set it up, which will help us understand this feature. In my setup, I have an outside Linux box with a static IP and a Firepower Threat Defense 7.1 device named NGFW1 with two interface zone objects, OutZone and InZone1. In addition, I have an inside uh, web server that we will try to reach from outside using FQDN objects. For my scenario, I will try to reach from outside net object www.out to the translated destination net address named www.indns that will create using Firepower Management Center. I have two SSH PuTTY console sessions here active. One is for my FTD device named MGFW1 and the other console is of my outside Linux box which I will be using to reach the internal web server. Let's try pinging the internal web server address from the firewall first. My internal web server name is listed in my DNS server as inside.dcloud.local, which I will try pinging here. As we can see, it gives an error of invalid host name. That means our DNS for that device is not set up. Two of the quick troubleshooting commands we can use here are show DNS and show FQDN. We can see that DNS shows no entry as well as for the FQDN, those fields are empty too. I will try to reach out uh, to my outside netted object www.out from my external machine. However, we can see it is also not reachable. I will try to do a curl to the outside netted object www.out and we can see if the web server is reachable or not. So in both cases from my outside Linux machine, I'm not able to reach the uh, outside netted object WW out. So we will switch to now Firepower Management Center and start configuring some of these uh, items. Switching to my Firepower Management Center version 7.1. Let us go ahead and configure the DNS setting for my NGFW1 FTD device from platform settings. So that's the device I'm using for this demo, NGFW1. Click on Edit. And on the left side, I can see the DNS resolution setting option. Click on the DNS and make sure you enable the DNS name resolution by device option. I will go ahead and enable it. And as we can see that the DNS server group uh, field were empty, I will go ahead and create a new DNS server group object. I'll put the name for it as Active Directory Server, AD Server, enter my, enter my default uh, domain, timeout, retries, as well as my internal DNS server IP address. Once this field have been entered correctly, go ahead and save the changes. And from the DNS server group, go ahead and select the newly created DNS server group object. Click Save. And the DNS settings have been configured correctly for the specific platform. I will go ahead and deploy these changes. And once the changes are deployed, we'll go back to our SSH session and see how the show DNS output looks like. So I will do a show DNS. And we can see that the DNS server is configured properly with my current DNS server IP address. The show FQDN shows empty field as we have not configured the FQDN object yet. 
Before we do that, let's try pinging the internal web server from the firewall and check that is correctly resolved to an IP using the DNS server. Looks like it is working as expected and now we can go back to our firepower management center and start configuring the FQ, FQDN objects. From the object management, you can create a new object by clicking on add object and we can see that there is a new field that says FQDN. You can enter the details as per your network and for my demo, I am creating a new FQDN object called www in DNS that will resolve the internal web server using DNS server. The benefit this provides is that even if my IP address of internal web server changes, the DNS server will automatically update it to a new IP address entry. We have previ previously discussed that the feature works for both IPv4 as well as IPv6 and uh, in the node we can see the limitation given for this specific feature that it applies to only translated destination net rules. I will go ahead and save this FQDN object. Once the FQ, FQDN object is created, I will go to my Cisco Secure Firewall Device settings and create a new manual net entry. So from my list of network objects, I can see that the www in DNS is listed as a FQDN object. So far, I have successfully created my DNS server settings. I have created a new FQDN object and now it's time to configure the net policy. A new net entry can be created by simply clicking on the add rule button. For my manual net, I will provide the interface object that says anything coming from out zone goes to the in zone one where my internal web server is located. Once that is complete, I will go to the translation tab and start configuring my net uh, translation also. In the translation, I will define that any packet coming from www out, my original outside net object, gets translated to the destination, which in our case will be the new FQDN object that we just created. As I'm using the uh, translated source as the destination interface, I will go ahead and select that option, go to my translated uh, destination, and mention the tra translated destination net as the new FQDN object. Once that is done, I will go ahead and click on OK to save these changes. On the net policy page, now I can clearly see what are the interface objects for my source and destination, how my original packet is, where is it coming from, and what is going to be translated into. Once everything looks fine, I will go ahead and click on save changes to save these new net changes. Now, before we deploy these changes, it's also important to create an allow rule. So we have created the net policy. We have created all the changes that were required so far. And I will go ahead to my access control policy where I already have a allow rule for outside uh, objects to reach our internal server. And I will go ahead and click the web server access policy. And in the allowed networks, I will go to networks. And in the destination network, I will uh, add a new destination network, which is www in DNS, our FQDN object. Once these changes are done, I will go ahead and uh, click on save and deploy these changes to the Firepower Management Center. Go ahead and click save again, deploy. And under the deployment for this specific device, NGFW1, I can see I created some changes to access control policy as well as to the manual net group. So go ahead and deploy these changes. And once the changes are deployed, I will go back to my SSS session of the NGFW1 as well as my outside Linux machine. So on the NGFW1, let's see what's the output uh, looking like now for show FQDN command. So when I do show FQDN, I can see there's now entries 
for the internal FQDN object, which is www.indns, the domain associated with it, and the associated IP address for the same. So whenever my inside machine will, inside web server will change uh, IP, we'll, we'll be able to see a new record there. Similarly, going back to my Linux machine, we can see that the internal web server is reachable from the outside netted object as well as we can curl to the object. So the web server is successfully reachable from outside. If I go to my FMC again, we can also look into details from the connection event. And from the connection event under table view, we also have new fields which are associated with the net entries. So I will go ahead and click on the table view of connection events. Click on any of the cross section there. Go ahead and scroll down to the columns and we can see there's some new column entries which are associated with the net. I will select them all, click on apply. And once that is refreshed, we can see that there's some new fields uh, showing under the column, the initiator IP, which is my outside Linux machine. What, uh, what was the responding IP? What was it uh, translating to as a destination and the other details? Just a quick recap. So to have a successful FQDN object working with your uh, net policy, make sure you have a DNS server entry in your platform. Make sure you create the FQDN uh, object properly. Make sure you have net policy for FQDN object associated only with the destination um, translated net. And that's all you need. I hope you enjoyed the demo and I'll see you in the next video.